Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I'm talking about The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, this one by Nagaru Tanigawa. This is the first volume of the Haruhi series. This series, they don't number them, one, two, three, four, five. They each have their own sort of name as they go along. This was originally released in 2009 in English, and the Japanese release was in 2006, so it's a bit of an older series. Now, when this was initially released in North America, you can see that the ebook version has reverted to sort of what we're used to seeing our light novels being packaged as now. But if you're looking at any physical releases, you'll notice that they're very different, that they've been given this very sort of uh, fiction-lit type cover. And that's because initially this wasn't released as a tie-in to manga or anime fans. It was being marketed to fiction fans. So if you're looking for why these covers are different, that is the reason. And it's sort of an interesting thing to look back at and see how light novels started eventually, you know, trickling into the English market again after the whole bubble burst with Tokyo Pop and a number of other companies in the early to mid-2000s. This one has 11 volumes. They are all available in English. There is an anime series with 24 episodes. There's also a movie and some spin-off sort of net short animes. The movie and the series cover the first four volumes with some cherry picking out of volumes five and six. So if you've watched the anime, that's kind of what you know at this point. This book is told from a first person's perspective by our main character, Kion. He is a high school student who is, well, when we first meet him, he talks about how he never really believed in Santa Claus, but that he had a very hard time letting go of the belief that aliens, time travel, espers, these type of things existed within the world. As he goes into high school, he has accepted that the world is the way the world is. There is physics and science at play here. The world is the way it is, and all of those other things are just flights of fancy. Imagine his surprise then when he's sitting in class and they're doing their class introductions, and the girl behind him stands up and basically says that she has no use for normal human beings. However, if there are any time travelers, aliens, or espers, they should come and see her. Keon initially believes, as you know, seems reasonable, that she must be kidding, but quickly finds out that she's not. In fact, this girl, Haruhi Suzumiya, is very interested in those things, believes greatly in those things, and is actively pursuing any kind of exciting mysteries that she can find and solve. To this end, she ends up creating a club called the SOS Brigade, and SOS does in fact stand for something, but it was way too long for me to memorize. And Keon, through a series of events, finds himself as one of the founding members of the SOS Brigade. This book is a combination of genres. Primarily, it starts off as a school life, slice of life type story, this weird sort of enigmatic girl, quirky girl, what's her story, what's she all about? But eventually, it starts going into the realms of science fiction and paranormal type stories. This all seems to really work, though, when it's framed within the larger story that I'm not going to tell you because if you know nothing about this series, I think that's the best way to go into it. When I read this book, I had no idea what it was about. I, I hadn't watched the anime. I hadn't really kept up with anything. The only thing that I really knew about Haruhi Suzumiya was that A, it was a popular series, and B, that most people really hated the second season of the anime. So that was really what I knew when I came into this. I went into it pretty blind, and I'm glad because I really enjoyed this book. And I think half of the enjoyment was having things sort of unravel as it went along and constantly questioning in my own mind, is this really real or is this some setup or, you know, trying to find out those answers to whether the things that were being talked about were legit or whether this was just some kind of mass delusion or whether it was a setup. Just trying to find that out really grabbed me and engaged me in the book. 
I will say that initially getting into the book, I found it a little hard. Um, I've actually had this book on my Kindle for a little while. Uh, I've tried reading it at least once or twice, kind of, I don't know, maybe I wasn't in the mood for it. Had a little hard time getting into it initially. But you get there when things really start taking off, when the first sort of reveal occurs, and most definitely the book grabbed me at that point. And because, like I said, I didn't know what this series was about. So I, w- I just sort of sat there going, oh, okay, so is this what this is about? And it just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, it's about this. Nope, now it's about this. Nope, now it's about this. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. You would think that it gets to the point where so much is going on that it would be almost absurd, and yet it all works in a funny kind of way. And I have to think that that's because of Haruhi Suzumiya herself. She is a very unique character. You could certainly see some Sundari type elements to her, but not really because Sundaris ultimately reveal this heart of gold, but Haruhi doesn't, at least not in this volume. In this volume, she is much more of a driven and blunt individual. And that will pursue whatever she wants, whether it breaks societal norms, whether it means that she will lose face, which she doesn't really seem to care about at all. It doesn't matter what the situation is. If Haruhi wants it, if Haruhi wants to make it happen, she is going to find a way. And it's very interesting and entertaining to watch this sort of whirlwind of a character And especially from the perspective of Keon, who is a pretty average guy. Um, You know, we often complain about vanilla main characters. And Keon sort of falls in that realm. But in terms of this book, I think it works. The reasoning that I have behind this is because all the other characters around Keon are such big personalities or have such big things going on that as this central character, this narrator telling the story, he acts as a really good proxy, I would say, for the audience because he is reasonably down to earth, because he is reasonably a grounded individual, we can connect with him a bit. And because he looks at Haruhi's behavior and goes, you can't do that, even though he eventually gets pulled into it, his initial reactions to it are the same, I think, as the reader's initial reactions. So in that way, he works as a really good proxy character, I think, for the reader to kind of get into this story and to experience these other characters in a way that we can at least wrap our heads around with because it's not like our narrator is as crazy as everybody else. So in the sense, this sort of vanilla, wishy-washy, I can get pulled and convinced kind of character, I think he works well in this series. But I think that it's a little bit deeper than that, and I think his character's a little bit deeper than that because I got the sense as we get to the end of the book And I'm not spoiling anything, but I will just say that I think that Keon works in this position, not just because he is a proxy for us as the audience, but because he himself does have a desire for this world that Haruhi is searching for to exist. I mean, what's the point of starting off with this prologue about how it was so hard for him to let the belief of those things go if we aren't going to then be able to make use of that and sort of say, as a character, he's enjoying this even when he doesn't seem to be enjoying this. He wants this world to exist even if he's fighting the idea of this world existing. As a character, I kind of got the feeling towards the book, end of the book, at at first I'm like, okay, you're weak, dude, you're weak. Faced with a strong-willed girl, you're weak. But towards the end of the book, I started thinking, no, no, I don't think it's just that you're weak or wishy-washy. Like, I, I think, honestly, that on a deeper level, 
you want to go. You want to give in. It's just that there's that part of your mind that's telling you that you probably shouldn't. And I think that if this book, when I finished it, I thought to myself, you know, this is one of those light novels that you can read on a couple of different levels. You can read it on the really superficial, like, high school hijinks, comedy, uh, you know, ridiculous situations, ha ha ha, yeah, you can read it on that level. You know, wishy-washy main character who just keeps getting pulled into all these terrible situations that he doesn't really want to be in because he is smart enough to realize that it's utter nonsense and, and insanity. Or, you know, start reading this on a bit of a deeper level. This story is, at some points, about what you're going to do to protect your world. And, and I don't mean like in that hop in the robot Shinji kind of way, but I mean in that sort of like what, what are you going to invest of yourself, whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically, what are you going to put into, what effort are you going to put into keeping your world the way it is, keeping your friendships, keeping the relationships that you have, you know, how far are you willing to go even to say, go so far as to challenge the will of a God to ensure that that God keeps the world the way things are? I mean, it can get kind of heady in some ways, which I really liked about this book. And by the time I was finished it, I was really excited to see where this story goes. And when we're talking relevance, in terms of, okay, this is an 11-year-old series when we're talking like it's Japan release. It's an 11-year-old series. Now, there were philosophical discussions, like there was a thought experiment discussed in this book, This and the, the, the idea is, what if the world's only five minutes old? I won't get into the details of it, but that was the thought experiment. What's really funny is, is that Strike the Blood Volume 5, which I just reviewed before this book, had that exact same thought experiment mentioned in it, even though Strike the Blood Volume 5 was published several years later. So when you're talking relevance in terms of ideas and themes and even philosophical questions, this book is still really on the pulse of what's going on in light novels right now. If anything, I would say it's almost a still a little step ahead of some of the light novels because I kind of get the sense with like light novels as they are now. I mean, we talk a lot about tropes and stuff that these have fallen into the whole harem thing. Um, you know, and I'm not going to say that there's zero harem elements in Haruhi, but it's really not strong. I would say like it, it's yeah. I'll leave it there. It, it, there's certain little tidbits that kind of you can go, eh, it's harem -esque, but but no, not in any way close to the kind of harems that we get in a lot of other light novels. It's almost like because Haruhi is a little bit older, that it was kind of ahead of the curve a bit, so it didn't get locked into this whole commercialization of, well, this is popular, so every book needs to have it. It has actually very strong female characters in it. Like I said, Haruhi herself is just this tornado that will not be defied and will not be objectified and could care less what people think about her. And so that we have this really strong female character. Uh, you know, like I said, even Keon himself, his personality you can see it in a couple of different ways, but it's still not as wishy-washy clueless as a lot of main character, male main characters have gotten, particularly when they're in harem type situations. All in all, like this book really holds up. I mean, I would put this on the same level as any of the light novels that I've been reading. And a lot of the ones that we've gotten in English are at most maybe four or five years old. So this one's double that, and yet it is easily as good as just about anything else that I think has been put out in English so far. It's not going to be for everybody. I, and, and I mean, really, no light novel, I think, is for everybody. Everybody wants something different from light novels, and that's why there is such a wide variety of light novels. Same as, like, why we have such a huge variety of anime and manga. It's for the same reason. 
you know, we like the genre, we like sort of the, the packaging, but we want different things out of those stories. So it's not going to be for everybody, but it really does have a lot of elements that I think will speak to a lot of different people. Like I said, it's got your slice of life. It's got your school life. It's got your paranormal. It's got your science fiction. It's even got a couple of pretty good battle scenes even. So all in all, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, it's a really good book. Um, I'm kind of sad that I put it off for so long, but now I know and I can continue with this series. Uh, a few of you on my Strike the Blood sort of review have said, oh, you have to at least go to volume four. At least volume four, if you're not going to go all the way, at least go to volume four. But we'll see how this goes. Um, 11 volumes is, I mean, by today's standards, is not that crazy, actually, in terms of length. So I may just stick it out. But uh, I really do want to see at least another couple volumes to see where this idea goes because I haven't even scratched the surface of what's going on in this book because they're big spoilers and because I enjoyed experiencing it so much, having very, very little knowledge of what this series was about. So if you have no knowledge about what this is about, but you kind of like what I've said, read it before you spoil it for yourself because I think that's probably the best way to experience it. So those are my rather long-winded thoughts of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. My next review is going to be on another volume one, but this one a lot newer, and that is volume one of Clockwork Planet. It just released uh, from J Novel Club, so going to be reviewing a newer number one. Um, I don't know if I stated it really overtly, but I'm trying right now to catch up at least with a bunch of volume ones of series that I haven't reviewed. Uh, I've got Book Girl, I've also got Mixed Bathing in Another Dimension, and Pain to Win in a VRMMO. I'm trying to at least have one review on this channel of pretty much every light novel that's available in English. There's a couple I still have to get. Um, so I'm working on that, but you can sort of see in the corner here, I've got a pile of books. So don't fear, there will be lots of ongoing volumes that I'm going to be reviewing as well. So if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels, don't forget to subscribe because like I said, I do a ton of light novel reviews here. Thank you all for joining me in this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.